Last time we were talking about uh, the context of the different cultures. So we said some cultures are more interested in people's facial expression or tone of voice, nonverbal communication, and other countries are less interested in nonverbal communication. So here we can see on the graph this is high context. Implicit means we understand things without saying them. Okay? Emphasize on the context, how do we communicate? <clears throat> when I watch Korean dramas, Japan or Korea is at the very top here, right? When I watch Korean dramas, I think there's a lot of silence in the Korean drama. It's hard for me to study Korean, because there's a lot of, there's two minutes where there's just silence. But I think nothing is happening. But their face is changing, right? Something is happening. Koreans can understand what they're thinking, right? It's implicit communication. It means we don't say it clearly, but people understand, okay? So I notice in the Korean drama they always zoom in and the facial expression is very important, right? But even if you watch the TV in Ireland, it's not always talking, always talking, right? So we can see that maybe Korea and the Middle East, similar, similar. Then down here at the bottom we have Germany, Scandinavia, okay, Swiss, North America. So we discussed that in the last class. So what about the speed and tempo? So in the US, in Ireland, we have informality and haste. So informality, for example, using the first name instead of all the title. Haste is doing things quickly. Okay, in Korea, you have Bali Bali culture. What does that mean, Korean students? Why do people say in Korea you have Bali Bali? What does that mean? Can you explain to the foreign students? Hmm? Fast, fast, yes, but what does Bali means fast or quick, right? What do you mean when we say that Korean people like Bali Bali? Oh, yeah, I think doing it fast is the best um, method of kind, kind of thing. What kind of things do you like doing quickly? For example, going more quickly. Walking more quickly? Irish people are the fastest walkers in the world. They, speed, they track the speed of the people walking on the street, the main street. In Ireland, it's the fastest in the world. Maybe because it's always raining or the weather is very cold. So people walk very quickly. Eating food. Eating food. Yes. Going to the office, getting something done, usually. Going to the doctor. So I like this about Korea. I like this part of their culture because I'm from Ireland and I also, in Ireland it's like the US. 
they have fast type of culture, right? Hasty. So I can do things quickly. For example, I can go to the doctor, I don't have to wait very long, or doing some other things. For example, Korea has good online, very good online culture, where people can do things quickly online. But if we go to another country, for example, if I go to China to do business, this is a problem uh, for Americans and Chinese people. I want to go there on my business trip, spend just one day, organize everything in one day, and leave. Everything is done, right? You're from China. Do you think that that's okay for Chinese people? I go there just one day, do the agreement, and leave? No? What do you expect me to do? Okay, so in China, you want to make a good business relationship, okay? So you guys want to trust the other person and build a relationship. So you want to spend a longer time together, right? And if I just go there and I, I'm in a hurry, I just want to make the deal and go home. But then maybe you don't trust me. Okay, even though we already finished the negotiation or the paperwork, the essential things are done. There is something else that is important to my Chinese customer or business partner, which is they want to build a relationship with me. They want to get to know me because they want to do the business together and trust me. So I should stay in China for two or three days, go to the dinner together, right? Do some things together. And this can be a cause of friction between some Chinese companies and Western companies. Western companies want to get finished quickly, but the Chinese companies can let it go for two or three days, let the negotiations go on. The reason is that they want to get to know the other side better. Okay? So, <clears throat> we have to understand about the tempo or the speed in another country. Uh, Europe, in Europe it's quite different. Ireland or the UK, Germany is, would be different than Spain and Greece and Portugal, right? Spain and Greece and Portugal slower. Slower relationship is more important. Okay? In Northern Europe a little bit faster. So uh, we can one way we can check this is the power distance index. Usually a high power distance index is more formal and a little bit slower. So this is the most uh, common mistake made by Americans in the Middle East. Okay? Americans, especially they're interested in the oil in the Middle East, but they want to do things very quickly. But the customers in the Middle East want to take their time, get to know the Americans. So let's talk about the P time and M time. So we have monochronic time and polychronic time. So the monochronic time is concentrating on one thing at a time, dividing time into small units, and thinking about promptness. So we're talking about the low context culture, like Germany or Switzerland is more on monochronic time. So if I do time management, I also use this kind of way. So it means that I will make a, uh, a list here of urgent and important. Do you understand urgent? Urgent means I need to do quickly. Important means it's important, right? Urgent and important. Then we can have not urgent and important. We can have not important and urgent. And then we have not urgent and not important. So I'm going to put my tasks in these boxes. Urgent, urgent and important I'll do first. Okay? Then depending on my time, I'll do this, not important and urgent. But if I don't have time, I'm not going to do this. Even though it's urgent, it's not important. Okay? So I don't have enough time, I'm going to eliminate this. Okay? Not urgent, not important, the first things I eliminate. Okay? I have a lot of time, then I might even have time to do this one that somebody asked me. Okay? Then I will do this one, and then I can bring in this. These ones I'm doing anyway, right? 
So that means that I have a list which I'm doing some things and I'm not doing some things. I'm concentrating on one thing at a time. Okay? I say I have time to do this, but I don't have time to do this. So I'm not going to do this, and I'm going to do this properly. I'm going to do this properly, and I'm not going to do this. Instead of doing this 50% and doing this 50%. Right? So I'm dividing the time into units and promptness. Okay? But <coughs> we have a different way of doing things, which is polyconic time. This is more dominant in high context cultures. So it means that maybe Korean people use this way. So you're able to do many things together at the same time. Okay? So you might feel that you can do this and do this together, right? Or do a number of things together. And <coughs> characterized by the simultaneous means at the same time occurrence of many things. So uh, allowing relationships to build because we're not getting something finished, we're keeping things going. Okay? Uh, so most cultures mix P time and M time. It's not clearly one or the other. So these days more people from the P time culture are adapting to the M time culture. <coughs> so uh, the company should Different countries have different type of marketing orientation. So some countries, people have the traditional product, production, and sales. And they are changing these days to the marketing orientation. So we have to encourage marketing orientation for global companies. Uh, next, let's talk about some uh, like social issues in the company. So the first one is uh, equality, okay? Gender equality. Do you understand gender equality? Gender equality means men and women are they equal, okay? So most countries have signed up to the UN has an agreement on women's rights, okay? Most countries have signed up, but this kind of UN agreement means that we are working towards this. Right? We might not have it now, but we're working towards it. Okay? And we hope in the future that we will have exactly equal rights. Okay? If you feel that this UN treaty has a complaints, complaints procedure, so if you feel that your country is not following, your government is not making the law to keep the women's rights or other rights in the UN type uh, agreements, you can complain to the UN. What all the UN can do is investigate your complaint and then notify your government. Okay? But they don't have any court or army to back up these kind of agreements. Okay? So let's have a look at uh, one measure of equality. This is uh, board seats, you can maybe see at the top, board seats held by women. So the board is the board of directors in the company, they're usually supervising managers, okay? So what percentage of them are women sitting on boards? So we can see here, again, Norway, Sweden, Finland, South Africa, okay? Norway, they have made the law that 40% of the board members have to be women, okay? That's the law in Norway. So is, is, does your country make those kind of laws or not? So we can see down here we have South Korea, just 1.9%. Okay, uh, China, 8.5%. Okay, uh, <coughs> Russia, 5.9%. So this is just one measure, but it's just giving an indication of uh, the gender equality. So in some Japan and Korea, uh, they say they have kind of glass ceiling, and they also have a high number of women leave the workforce after they are pregnant okay? because of the long working hours. It's hard for women to, after they get pregnant, to uh, stay in the companies. So hopefully in Korea and Japan this can change in the future. So uh, we have corruption. So different cultures have different ideas of corruption and what corruption is. So we have uh, in, 
com some communist countries, they think profit, profit is corruption, right? Taking more than you should they, from people. In Japan or Korea, high collectivism country, they think individualism, people only thinking of themselves is kind of corruption. In India, they think consumerism is kind of corruption. China, missionaries. Africa, intellectual property laws. They think, we'll talk about later in the legal area, they think that people should share intellectual property for the good of mankind. Southeast Asia have problems with the currency, currency speculation before. So they think currency speculation could be a time of corruption. So if we look at this consumerism and we can look at uh, Barbie. Do you know Barbie? Do you like Barbie? No, why not? What's wrong with Barbie? Hmm? I don't know. Okay. Did you have any Barbie dolls when you were kids? Yes? Which do you prefer, Barbie dolls or Disney dolls? Barbie dolls. Barbie, Barbie, Disney, Barbie. So Barbie made a different strategy than Disney. Disney has a lot of different princesses, right? So who's your favorite Disney princess? Who's your favorite Disney princess? Elsa. Elsa. Elsa from Frozen. You just watched it recently. Maybe it was Belle five years ago, but now you changed. Okay. So anyway, Disney has a lot of different princesses, and they even they have an Asian princess, they even have a black princess, right? They have an Indian princess. They have a lot of different princesses from all the different cultures and races. So Disney sells the princess of this particular race in the particular country. Okay? So Barbie, on the other hand, just sells the blonde haired, white-skinned Barbie all over the world. So a different kind of strategy. So Barbie was using a standardization strategy, but Disney won against them, right? You said you preferred the Disney doll. In Korea, the Disney dolls were selling better. In the Middle East, uh, the Middle Eastern race doll was selling better, okay? If you watched uh, Aladdin, for example, there is the princess in the movie Aladdin. Okay, so in India, this princess is selling well. Okay, so uh, the parents and the governments thought that it's better not to have just the blonde hair uh, Barbie. So Disney did better because of this. So we can see that some countries like India, they see this just as a different kind of uh, corruption. So. Uh, the Western focus on bribery. We're going to talk about bribery. What does anybody know? What is bribery? Can you tell me? Giving money under the table. What does it mean under the table? Can you show me? Illegally. Illegally. I can't show. You. Other words we use is a brown paper bag, right? Giving people a brown paper bag means giving them a bribe. Usually there's money in the brown paper bag, okay? Or giving money under the table. Nobody can see, right? So there's different types of bribery. So the decision to pay a bribe makes a conflict between what is ethical and profit, right thing to do, and what is profitable or necessary for business. Because in some countries, say you're the CEO and your employee comes to you and they tell you, we can't get the business in the Middle East, right? We're a Korean company and we want to build a we want to build a nuclear plant in the Middle East, nuclear energy. But there's also another country who wants to build a nuclear energy plant. But if we pay them a bribe, we can get the business, right? It's a lot of money. So what are you going to say as the CEO? Yes. Yes? <laughs> what are you going to say? No? Okay, so I should say no. <laughs> that is bribery, right? But sometimes it's necessary. You, you say no, you lose the business, right? The other person gets the business. It's then on you to prove that they took a bribe. Okay? 
So the OECD and Transparency International are trying to reduce this kind of bribery. In some countries, it's uh, stronger than other countries. We can see that there are not just... Uh, we're talking about this in countries, but the origin country, even though uh, Siemens is a German company, Germany has very low corruption, Siemens was caught paying bribes in China, right? So, <clears throat> for example, Siemens is making a very big underground or metro contract worth billions of dollars in China. So it paid the bribe to the local government because it thinks that's the way business is done. I have to pay the bribe if I want to build the metro, right? So they got caught and there was a court case and of course the person was fired from the company and so on. Okay, so <coughs> the problem is not so much the origin, what country is the company from, as the country where the business is being done, right? We're talking about the, where is the business being done in that area? What is the culture? So, uh, Transparency International has a corruption perception index. So you can go to Google and type in Transparency International and you will see the up-to-date uh, corruption person. So the, the website is www.transparency.org transparency So just go to the internet, go to Google. type in transparency.org so this is Transparency International home page so this is the most famous uh, company for uh, looking at the uh, corruption right so corruption by country So I'll go to what we do and corruption by country. Okay. Then we can see the map of the world, right? So we can click on any country. So we can see the uh, Saudi Arabia, right? For example, they will give you your score. Bribe payers index. Corruption perceptions index. So what they do is they ask the a lot of leading business people who do business in the country, they ask the government officials a lot of questions like from 1 to 10, what is the likelihood of people taking a bribe? And then they make index, okay? So, uh, we can see that rank is 55 from 175. So, the lower rank, the worst, right? So if it's rank one, it will be better. So uh, we can go through on the uh, different countries. So you can check about your own country and tell me the ranking. So go to your country on this map. So let's start with uh, South Korea. So Korean students, what is the ranking of South Korea? 43rd in the world. Yes. Right? Is that Korea is the twelfth is the twelfth biggest economy? Okay. Uh, control of corruption, sixty nine percent. Anti bribery convention. Enforcement means are we? Are we enforcing this? Are we doing this, right? Anti-bribery, just moderate. So, uh, let's look at China. Chinese students, what is the corruption perception index for China? 100, 100 from 175, Russia. 
Of Denmark. One. <laughs> Denmark is number one in the world. Yeah, sure. Okay. So, uh, Ireland, we can say, is it more corrupt than Denmark. Ireland is number 17. It's not that good for Northern Europe, right? Usually the Northern Europe countries is in the top 10. Norway, Norway is 11. Norway is 11. Norway. Five, sorry, five. Five? Yeah, uh, I mean, on the, uh, on the picture you have in the presentation, mm. it's 11, but like from 2014, it says it's five. Okay. So, uh, we can see that doing business in Russia or China, where this ranked 100, 136, that we just have to understand that uh, we could, bribery could be uh, an issue, but it's always better to let the, uh, always better to let the competition, if we have the choice between paying a bribe to get a contract or not paying a bribe, we should always do the right thing and not pay the bribe. Okay? Why? One simple reason, practical reason everybody can see, is you can get caught. Your career will be ruined, right? Like the guy from Siemens in China, you'll be fired from the company and nobody will want to hire you again, right? Your company will get a very bad effect, so on. So anyway, it's too much risk personally and for your company to pay a bribe compared to the profit. But apart from that, it's the wrong thing to do, right? If everybody is paying a bribe, then uh, the society is not going to be working well. So we have different types. Uh, bribery is uh, payment by someone seeking an unlawful advantage. Extortion is a little bit like blackmail. So uh, subordination. Lubrication. So lubrication is small sum, cash, gift, a service, uh, given to a low-ranking official. So recently, one of my friends went to the Philippines, and the immigration guy just wanted him to give him some money going into the country. But of course, he didn't have to give him any money, right? But this is a little bit. He just wanted small, some cash. He was almost like asking for some cash, right? Well, he didn't give him any cash. He didn't have to. Okay? So, uh, subordination, uh, hiding the money, and uh, trying to get the official to do some illegal activity. Okay? Agent's fees. You have to be careful when you hire an agent, because you could hire an agent because you don't understand the country, right? But if that agent is bribing, then you're going to get into trouble. So you have to check that the agent is uh, not going to bribe, bribe, and he accounts for the money. If you give the agent the money, you know where the money is being spent. Okay? So we can see uh, in FIFA, there was a big problem about where the World Cup was going to be. They did an investigation and they found some officials from some countries were guilty of accepting the bribe to vote that the World Cup should be in a certain country or another country. Okay? But they didn't, it was hard to find. Some agent maybe paid money into an account that was not linked. But uh, you can see that it's a real problem. Okay? So the Foreign Corrupt Practices Act, uh, we have some uh, acts and controls. But we need people just to take responsibility also. We need, it's hard to regulate exactly everybody, right? Uh, so we also need people to make their own correct decisions. And since 1994, the US businesses, they will say when they were offered or they felt that they had to pay a bribe to get a contract, and they decided not to. So these contracts was worth 145 billion that they didn't take. So <clears throat> then let's talk about the ethical and socially responsible decision making. 
So the company should make uh, proper uh, decisions, right? About employment practices, consumer protection, protecting the environment, human rights and freedoms. So some people are taking the business ethics course, right? But this is just summed up very short in a short way. First of all, the laws. Law is the basic that marks the past behavior. But on top of this, we have ethics. So ethics is over the law. Okay? We should do something more than the law. We have to distinguish between what's right and what's wrong. What we should do and what's the fair thing to do. So first of all, we take kind of three steps. Utilitarian ethics is, does it achieve a common good? <laughs> this is mainly used by stakeholder management. Checking who is the stakeholder of your company, like customers and uh, suppliers and employees, and finding out what's good for them. So we try to promote common good. The next part is the rights. We think about rights. Everybody has rights. Okay. So we think about people's rights and our obligation or duty. For example, discrimination. We shouldn't discriminate against men or women, between men or women. Okay. So they have a right to non-discrimination. Then finally, justice or fairness. We have our own idea about what is fair or what is just. Then we can use that, like moral, a moral compass to make our decision. So just uh, summing up, we have two different types of cultures. In grouped in, if we just group in two types, we would call information oriented and relationship oriented. So information oriented, oriented culture, low context, individualism, low power distance, less bribery, low distance from English, okay, competition. Okay, so this is more in where my culture, right? Relationship oriented, high context, collectivism, high power distance, bribery a little bit more common, there's some exceptions. Okay, polychronic time. Face to face communication is important. Rather than competition, we want to cooperate and reduce the transaction costs. Okay? So uh, let's discuss some questions to review. Uh, first of all, give an example of a cultural imperative and a cultural elective from your country. In the last class, we talked about imperative, something you have to do, elective. You can choose whether to do it or not. Okay. So here we said that uh, some cultures you have to smile and so on. And elective, for example, uh, greeting with a kiss in France. You don't have to do it. It's just nice if you do, right? So this is the first question. Then. Uh, interview a foreign student about the cultural shocks they received when they came to Korea. So we'll need to sit next to a foreign student for these questions. And describe some different types of bribery. And how is P time different from M time? Okay. So first of all, find a student who's not from the same country as you, because you're going to have to interview that in a minute. So change your seat. Mix the country. Yes. 
체스랑 해야 되는 거야. 민다. 오케이. 같이 해요. 
changing. Yes. Uh, what did your foreign student say about the culture shock she received in Korea? Yeah. Uh. What was her culture shock? <coughs> did, she did you interview her about her culture shock? Uh, not yet. Hey, uh, Yoon Sang Ho. <coughs> yes, what did your foreign students say about their culture shock? Uh, 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 said that uh, there, there is limited time to enter to dormitory and, and in and out. And uh, uh, also classroom and uh, affect the laws and ethics of traffic stations is flooding in Korea. So kind of that is... Uh, okay, so it's a little bit related to collectivism. They expect that everybody comes back at the same time, yeah. follows the same way. Yeah. In the dormitory, yeah. right? <coughs> so, uh, next question. Uh, Wong Hester, describe some different types of bribery. Would you accept a payment to allow one customer to have a faster delivery? Uh, it is my cost customer if the situation is uh, emergency, that time I will accept, but you're going to accept the bribe or just to do the faster delivery? Faster delivery. Not accept the bribe? <laughs> yes. Okay. And then what are some different bribery. types of bribery? Like, how much bribery? Like, Philippines, the airport, the time. Uh, uh, when I was. Uh, when I went there, the mm -hmm. time someone asked me to uh, give, give the money and then I will, I will you take a best way, best way. Oh really? So yes. it also happened to you in the Philippines yeah, at the airport? Yeah, I did the best way. <laughs> yes, that's better. Okay, so that's a small type, that's called lubrication, right? Mm -hmm. But we also have some other types, right? Mm -hmm. Kickbacks. Right, so kickback is that maybe you and I can agree. We said it, we saw in Brazil this was a problem recently. The government oil company made a contract, right? I'm working for the government company, you're my friend. So we make a contract, you're going to sell some machinery to the government, right? Then you sell the machinery to me. The price of the machinery is one million dollars. But I say to you, let's make the contract for two million dollars. You can keep half a million and I keep half a million. What are you going to say? Come on, we're friends. Nobody's going to know. You can buy a really big mouse with half a million. Think about your children. You're doing it for your children's education. They can go to the US for university. What? Think about your children, again. Your wife. Okay, so this was the problem in Brazil, right? So some people accepted the bribe and it's coming out now. So they get caught, right? We say yes, but maybe not this year, but three years or five years later, they're going to get caught. You lose your job, you lose your company, go to jail. Not so good for your kids in the end, right? So, uh, last question. Uh, <coughs> Kim Gong Ju, how is P, P time different than M time? Do a lot of things at the same time, but men can only do one thing. 
on its mind, right? So anyway, uh, and I'm concentrating on the one task at the time. Okay, so let's do these uh, internet tasks. So <laughs> look at the web pages of some multinational companies and look at their front door to the world. And also they have some do they have some corporate social responsibility section on their web page? So you can search Coca-Cola, Microsoft, Apple, Paul, Siemens, Nike, Adidas, any company you can think of, right? Choose a company. See how is their front door to the world. Okay? Then visit the website of Nike. Check their statements on corporate values. And then Google Nike and human rights violations. Compare their values, statements, and violations of human rights. Okay. <clears throat> so start by just checking the homepage of some international company. Look for their mission or their vision or their corporate responsibility. Do they have all the different languages? We said before that companies should have uh, different languages for the different people or different countries. Look at a few different companies and try to pick out one which you think has a good, a good front door, like uh, also using the languages or very easy or people from different cultures. Go to about night, it's not easy to find at the bottom of the page. See our mission, mission statement, company profile, learn more, community impact, learn more, sustainability. This is corporate social responsibility or sustainability. Just we can uh, we just started the task in the class, so we can finish uh, this task for homework. So just finish this, and I'll ask you about that in the next class. So tell me some multinational company which you think has a good web page, a good front door to the world. Okay, and then secondly. Do this part about uh, Nike. Also, Google Nike corporate values, right? Nike human rights values. 